Quentin Hall has worn many hats in his career, ranging from a self-described bottle washer to a hardware designer to an FAE. In his current role as an AI systems architect at Xilinx, he wears the pink hat. That would be the Xilinx project for Python on Zinc FPGAs, and Quentin will talk about how developers can leverage that in edge AI appliances. Welcome to Tech Jazz, Quentin. Now, I'm really excited for this topic because Python is easy, and hardware languages aren't so easy. So let's talk about Python on FPGAs. Chris, it's true. Python on Zinc, or what we like to refer to fondly as Pink, provides developers with a software framework that enables them to directly target Xilinx devices using Python code and libraries. Consider that there are perhaps 50,000 RTL developers worldwide. To contrast, Slash Data reported in 2019 that there are approximately 8.2 million Python developers. Pink enables developers to deploy high-performance AI and vision systems on Xilinx platforms directly using Python. Of course, hardware is part of that equation. So what kind of hardware do you have for someone building an edge AI appliance? A typical AI appliance would connect to multiple IP cameras and would be responsible to parse and decode the resulting RTSP streams and then apply deep learning techniques on each of those streams, thus extracting useful insights in the visual domain. Typical tasks for machine learning acceleration in this context might include object detection, classification, or tracking. The ZCU-104, available from Mauser Electronics, is a low-cost development platform which can specifically be used to target high-performance machine learning inference in this space. The ZCU-104 features our Zinc Ultrascale Plus multiprocessor SoC, the 7EV. The heart of this SoC is a quad-core Cortex-A53 processor and dual-core R5 real-time processor, and EV product variants include a hardened video codec, which is capable of simultaneous AVC and HEVC encode and decode, up to a maximum pixel rate of 4K at 60, and a maximum of 32 video streams. The Xilinx Zinc Ultrascale Plus MPSOC family scales by more than an order of magnitude from the smallest device to the largest device, all while maintaining the same critical processor and inference architecture. This allows users to scale their application according to their machine learning inference requirements without having to migrate to a different platform, a different CPU architecture, or a different machine learning inference architecture. Many developers start off by selecting a module-based solution for their ML inference requirements in the embedded vision space, and often find that they need to migrate partway through their development cycle in order to achieve higher levels of performance. With Xilinx devices, you can select the family, the CPU architecture, and the inference architecture up front, and then scale up and down depending on your needs. So how does AI come into the equation? Chris, Xilinx offers a very high-performance Int8 inference engine, which we call the DPU. The DPU, or Deep Neural Net Processing Unit, is a micro-coded engine that resides in the programmable logic fabric of the device. One of the key advantages of Xilinx programmable logic is the rich block RAM and ultra RAM resources that are available, which allow for intermediate activation and weight storage during inference. This local memory is directly accessed by the DPU and may be read or written within a handful of clock cycles. It is in fact this combination of local memory and efficient scheduling of the neural network graph operators that allows Xilinx to deploy neural networks with extremely low latency and without batching. Batching, as you're probably aware, is required in the case of CPU and GPU-based inference in order to address the L3 cache problem. And how does a developer leverage the capabilities of this DPU? Chris, Xilinx provides a complete software stack which enables the deployment of neural networks on our devices. The starting point for this is a trained model, trained by the developer in a familiar framework of their choice, be it Cafe, Darknet, Keras, PyTorch, TensorFlow, and now even TVM. Vitus AI directly parses the output of these frameworks, 
For instance, in the case of TensorFlow, it will directly parse the trained protobuf file. The operators that are found in the graph are compiled as a set of instructions that will run on the DPU. Through this process, we fuse and optimize certain instructions in order to better take advantage of the DPU's underlying architecture. Meanwhile, the weights, which are also parsed from the origin model, are now optimized in terms of their memory locations to optimize the memory access at runtime. In addition, Xilinx provides an optional tool known as the AI Optimizer. This tool is an advanced kernel level pruning tool which can be used to prune kernels out of the neural network using the native framework to greatly reduce the computational cost of deployment while increasing the overall efficiency, reducing latency, reducing power consumption, and all of this with minimal impact to overall deployment accuracy. Now that the network has been optimized, quantized, and compiled, we can now deploy that neural network, leveraging the Xilinx runtime APIs on one of our domain-specific DPU architectures. In this case, specifically our CNN DPU, which is targeted for embedded vision applications. The Xilinx DPU can be targeted to one or more Xilinx evaluation boards. And in fact, Xilinx provides pre-built images for the ZCU-102 as well as the low-cost ZCU-104, which is the feature of today's discussion. It's possible to integrate the DPU into a custom hardware platform, as well as our Alveo PCI Express accelerator cards, which enable acceleration of machine learning inference for on-premises applications, as well as the offloading of other computationally expensive tasks, which can be accelerated in the programmable logic fabric. With Xilinx machine learning inference solutions, you don't have to make a choice up front as to where the model will be deployed. Whether that model is to be deployed on a low-cost edge device, or in a server in a back room, or to be deployed somewhere in the cloud. That choice is yours, and that choice is yours at runtime. And that is one of the huge benefits of Vitus AI as it scales from the edge to the cloud. In many cases, our customers are deploying AI at the edge, but are also employing cloud services for additional analytics. A very common use case is to pre-process video at the edge, extracting only the regions of interest or the specific frames of video that are of interest, rather than naively streaming all of the video to the cloud. Rather, only the video that provides useful insights or can be used as evidence is streamed, and that video can then be further analyzed, processed, or stored in the cloud. Okay, and how does that go together with Python? Pink was developed by Xilinx Research Labs as a vehicle to enable Python coding directly on Xilinx SOCs. Recently, the Pink development team incorporated support for the DPU within their framework. The ZCU-104 is one of the off-the-shelf development boards that are supported by what we call DPU Pink. DPU Pink can be installed directly onto the 104, at which point the developer has access to several Jupyter Notebooks machine learning model deployment examples that are coded in pure Python. We mentioned previously that Pink provides access to standard Python libraries, such as NumPy, it also includes the Python runtime libraries, which are specific to Xilinx as well as the DPU. And these libraries enable developers to deploy neural network models directly from their Python code. To put some proverbial icing on the cake, as it were, this platform has also been pre-certified with AWS Greengrass, allowing developers to train their models in the cloud and deploy these novel machine learning inference applications remotely via IoT services such as Greengrass. So how does a developer get started with DPU Pink? Well, the developer simply purchases a ZCU-104 board from Mauser. They download and write to an SD card the latest Pink image for the ZCU-104. They then boot the board from this image, and once the board has been connected to the internet, via a terminal, 
from a connected laptop or PC, a few simple command line functions can be executed, which cause the board to download and install DPU Pink. At this point, the developer can directly access Jupyter Notebook examples, which are part of that image, via their browser over Ethernet. From there, the developer typically proceeds to develop some sort of custom application and custom neural networks, which had been previously trained by that developer or by that developer's AI team, can now be compiled with Vitus AI and deployed directly on the CCU-104 using the DPU for inference acceleration via the Xilinx Python APIs that are included with DPU Pink. In fact, it's possible to deploy multiple neural networks, be they classification, detec detection, segmentation, or what have you, on a single ZCU-104 board, and processing one or more video streams, either heterogeneously or homogeneously. So for instance, you might deploy object detection on each of the eight streams that are being received and decoded by the board, and then subsequently classify the behavior of those objects as they traverse across multiple video inputs. For instance, such technology might be used for theft detection and prevention. In addition to standard Python libraries, Xilinx provides the custom Vitus Vision Library, which contains a class of functions that have been accelerated by Xilinx in the programmable logic fabric. These functions range from some of the more basic tasks that you might expect, such as drawing functions for drawing bounding box overlays, to cropping, scaling, and also to more advanced video processing algorithms such as Harris Corner Detection and Optical Flow. We mentioned earlier the VCU. Our VCU can also support region of interest based encoding, allowing developers to encode with higher priority the regions of interest that are detected in the video stream and fine tune encoding and storage of the videos in order to focus the use of the available bandwidth and storage capacity on these specific regions of interest as they are the ones that most likely provide useful insights. What's the workflow like with DPU Pink? There are many challenges to building a software stack that can widely and efficiently enable the deployment of neural networks on a hardware accelerated platform. And one of these challenges is of course the expansion and maintenance of framework support, which is constantly changing. Today, Vitus AI supports a variety of frameworks, including CAFE, Darknet, TensorFlow, and PyTorch. However, on the day that an updated software stack and compiler is released from any vendor, it will lag in terms of framework and layer support. It's true, however, that a capable stack must be able to parse operators from a wide variety of frameworks and with each update to a given framework. And the problem is, of course, that as frameworks are updated, a given operator may be enhanced with new parameters or new functionality. And furthermore, new or novel layer types are developed and leveraged by developers in new networks. In either case, both the software stack parser and compiler must be enhanced to support the required functionality, and these changes must be verified and optimized. So if you look at this over the longer term, um, the, these developments lead to very high levels of efficiency for network deployments because of the time taken to verify, optimize, and enhance uh, new operators or layer types. And this, of course, leads in turn to reduce power consumption increased inference rates, and reduced system cost. However, in the shorter term, this can limit what is feasible for the developer to deploy. This is particularly true when the developer wants to deploy a novel network layer or an operator that's not supported via the DPU for acceleration. And so the entire stack must be updated to support new layers or new operators, or the developer needs to segment their network graph and manually craft a C function to implement the unsupported operator or layer on the CPU on our platform. And this is similar across all vendors. Similarly with framework support, the developer may have to adapt their network or retrain the network in order to suit the requirements of the stack. And this, Chris, is where TVM fits in. 
You mentioned the ability to use a CPU, GPU, DPU, or some hybrid approach. How does that work? TVM started as an open source project originating out of the University of Washington. Today, it's an Apache Software Foundation project. TVM provides diverse framework support, including native support for PyTorch, CoreML, TensorFlow, TensorFlow Lite, Keras, MXNet, DarkNet, Cafe2, and even others. ONNX Graph import is also supported, which further extends TVM support beyond the native framework support. Now, the open source community and many commercial partners are actually working hand in hand to maintain and update TVM, with the result that TVM is consistently updated with the latest framework support. As just one example of a commercial partner, AWS SageMaker Neo leverages TVM as their front end for neural network optimization and deployment across a wide variety of platforms, both edge and cloud. This is made possible through the fact that TVM generates highly optimized CPU and GPU code for graph operators. TVM also provides support for custom accelerators, and in fact, TVM developers had previously created a Xilinx-based neural network accelerator running on our Zinc 7000 devices, and that accelerator was known as the VTA. With Vitus AI 1.2, Xilinx decided to enable support for the Xilinx DPU and TVM. The net result is that TVM can now be used as the front end to parse the train graph, eliminating the problem of framework support. Layers which are supported for acceleration on the DPU are compiled as a DPU kernel optimized by Vitus AI. And in addition, TVM will then output optimized A53 as well as Neon code for the layers that are not supported by the DPU. The net result of all of this is that virtually any network can be deployed on Xilinx SOCs without modification, and TVM automatically segments the graphs into CPU and DPU kernels. The end-to-end graph can then be deployed on Xilinx SOC as a set of subgraphs or even parallel subgraphs as required. TVM is a very promising development, and I would highly encourage developers who are looking at Xilinx solutions to begin to evaluate the capabilities of the Xilinx TVM solution. So just to briefly summarize, I believe that the ZCU 104 is an excellent platform for targeting the acceleration of multi-stream, multi-network AI applications. Furthermore, the scalability of Xilinx SOCs combined with the ease of development that is afforded by both DPU Pink and TVM make this a compelling solution for Mauser customers who are looking to accelerate both cloud-connected and standalone edge AI appliances. Chris, I really appreciate your time today and have really enjoyed the opportunity to talk about Xilinx solutions for this domain. I'm really looking forward to our next discussion. Well, thank you, Quentin, for joining us and for all you and the rest of the good folks that Xilinx are doing to bring FPGAs to the rest of us who count ourselves among the eight point something million Python developers, <laughs> not among the RTL developers. And if you'd like to learn more about using the Xilinx Zinc Ultrascale Plus MPSOCs and development kits or the pink platform to build out your next AI edge appliance, visit mauser.com and be sure to check back soon for the next episode of Tech Chats.